Hello everyone, welcome to the first part of the MPC AI creation and we're going to have a, a deeper look and we're going to create a behavior that will be kind of future proof if we want to expand um, adding variations of this behavior as well. So before we get started I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So what we're going to do here is we're going to expand the dummy we already created and you know that kind of calls for a new name as well so let's call him oh well, for now let's just call him npc we'll uh, we'll think of uh, what we'll call him later so what we're going to do here is we're going to create uh, a behavior um, that it will basically allow us to set a lot more um, we'll be using a um, you know, a bool system, kind of a class system, which will allow us to basically create one behavior that has multiple variations. The reason we're doing this is simply because we can't duplicate behaviors, so having to recreate them completely for, um, you know, for every variation is a lot of work. So we kind of want to avoid doing that. So in order to do that, you know, we'll, we'll need to uh, create a couple of things. So first off, let's make sure we actually have a, uh, a behavior. Let's add a perception as well. And we're going to add some local variables. Cool. So um, first local variable is going to be spawn. Now, I will already explain what this will do. So spawn will al allow us to basically have a origin point of this player, um, which is going to be well where the of, of the NPC, which is going to be where the NPC spawns as well. And the reason for that is because that's how it works in Dark Souls. You know, they basically wander off, follow the player up until a certain point, and then they backtrack to um, where they originally spawned. So we're going to do that as well. Um, and we're going to have a player variable. And this I'll explain in a bit. Um, but basically, let's just drop in the player. Now, you can also make this a, um, a global variable if you prefer. And if you're going to create prefabs, that might actually be better. So let's just do that. Let's just actually uh, create a player global variable. There we go. Game object. And we're going to do NPC in the classification just so we know that it's being used for the NPC. And in the on start trigger, um, we have so many of them already. I'm sure we can uh, just add it here variable game object, global variable player, and we're just going to uh, get this value from the player. It's actually um, going to be <coughs> going to be easier this way. Um, you know, this way we're not tied to the scene player and we can just uh, drop them in as prefabs. It's actually, uh, actually a better choice. Cool. So we have our spawn as well, and the spawn is going to be a, uh, a marker. There we go. So a marker that's going to be on the NPC. Perfect. Going to give this marker a box collider as well, um, which is set to trigger. Um, it's just basically to make sure it's actually recognized as an actual object because of its collider. Um, avoids a lot of complications. Cool. And then this trigger is going to have a trigger of on start. Um, uh, transform invoker. And then we're going to do clear parents. So what this actually does, and we'll, uh, we'll hit play straight away. Is as you can see, it's going to um, you know basically remove uh, the marker from um, you know from the 
the actual uh, hierarchy of the NPC. And the reason for that is we don't want that marker to follow along with the player, uh, with the NPC. It needs to stay put. And doing it this way, we can make sure we can reference to it really easily. Um, and at the same time, um, outside of being able to reference it, um, we can use this as a prefab option as well. So it's a, it's an easy way to, uh, to do that. Um, and then let's make sure we still reference to it. And as you can see now, this way we can have a local reference and you know, it's, it's going to be basically outside of the, the hierarchy of the MPC, uh, making it so that it won't follow along. We don't need to do a scene reference and yeah, it's a, an easy way to do this. Cool. So we have the marker um, as a variable. Now what we need to do next is basically create a folder and we're going to start off um, with creating our actual behavior tree. So create a new folder, 05 behavior. And again, I'm doing all of this to group everything that I'm using a lot for mechanics in a, in a simple way. You obviously don't have to do that, but you know it helps and we'll create a new behavior tree. So behavior, there we go. Um, we'll call this basic enemy. And, you know, yes, important, the basic enemy is going to have, um, you know, variations, um, obviously, so it, it will definitely depend um, but it's basically going to be a behavior tree for all of the basic enemies. So yes, for you know the bosses, um, we'll need to be more creative. The behavior will be uh, quite different. So we wouldn't be able to simply um, you know create a, a variant of this. So we, we can't really do that. Cool. So um, next up in the blackboard, I'm going to add um, two things here. Um, when it comes to the uh, actual behavior tree. So I'm going to add a bool, um, which is going to be spotted, and I'll explain that in a bit. And we're going to have a string, which is going to be class. And the reason I'm doing um, doing this with the blackboard is just, um, you know, it's been a bit more consistent doing it this way for me um, when it comes to how the behavior actually performs. Um, so yeah. Then if we go back to the MPC and we check, um, you know, we check the, the parameters, basically those are new variables and we have class and we have spotted. Cool. So now we can actually start with our root. And you know, the root will always follow a composite. Uh, in this case, it will be a selector as well. I'm going to have a task here. I'm going to have a selector here. And we're going to have a selector here. Now this first um, this first task is basically going to be related to his um, health attributes. Um, so basically death. So condition attribute of the invoker. Um, is if, if his health is going to be less or equal to zero. Um, and I'm just going to add a weight. And the reason I'm adding a weight of like, you know, one second um, is simply because it seemed to, you know, just work better for me. <laughs> um, seemed a bit more, um, you know, consistent with his actual, um, actual behaviors and the way he's reacting once um, he gets to that point. Um, so yeah, it's all about, you know, avoiding any errors and complications. Now this selector is going to be, um, you know, the, the important one. Um, it's going to basically decide, um, you know, which class we're going to select. Um, it's also going to make sure that, um, you know, we have the condition that um, if we're unarmed, so let's make sure we select melee for this. Um, so is, is the invoker uh, unarmed, then we're going to take some actions. Um, and for this one, we can already select the opposite. So if we are armed, then these are going to be the selections. Now in order to avoid some, uh, you know, some errors or inconsistencies, um, 
I actually do this most of the time. So make sure we have, um, you know, similar similar conditions in other um, in other tasks. Um, it just proves to be a bit more consistent when it comes to actually executing these behaviors. So we'll keep it simple for now. We're just going to go with two tasks. Um, there we go. And these will be based on our class. So we're going to do string again. So string local variable invoker um, class. Um, so that's a blackboard one we created. Um, this is going to be uh, shield. And this is going to be uh, no shield. So we can just copy that over, of course. And you know, these are just the classes um, we see. Um, so you know, the player won't see that class uh, name. So that's why the name doesn't really matter all that much. Um, and what we're doing here as well is I'm actually setting the character model as well. So character model. Um, invoker um, and we have to pick a, uh, a model that we'll use then um, obviously we'll need to do the same for this one so there we go and we need to do a draw um, weapon and yes I'm aware we still need to create those so um, this makes uh, the behavior straight away a bit more interesting than just doing it for you know for the one. So it allows us to basically set the character model and it allows us um, you know to uh, draw different um, melee weapons. And on based on those classes, we can have a uh, you know another branch off when it comes uh, to this selector in the actions we're actually going to take um, based on those selections. And you know, in, in my opinion, it just makes a lot of things uh, easier if we don't have to duplicate a lot of the same work. Um, so yeah, anyway, so first off, um, this selector is going to have a couple of tasks as well. So this is based on, um, can we actually see the player? So can see, can he uh, see the player? So if he cannot see the player, and our bool, which we created in the blackboard as well, of spotted is also set to um, to basically false. Um, it means he can't see the player and he's never seen the player. Um, you know that's that's basically um, what it means. Um, so this is basically the you know the default. Um, again, using that uh, that weight here. So this is basically the default. If he doesn't see the player, he's never seen the player. He's just you know idling. Um, and instead of doing the wait one second, we can do an idle animation as well. If you have something cool of him sitting down or something like that, um, which you have in Dark Souls, for example, um, where some of them just sit on the floor or just just stand basically and do nothing. So yeah. Um, then we're going to do um, the next next task, um, where basically um, spotted is still false because he hasn't seen the the player uh, before, um, but now he can actually see the player with uh, perception. And as you might guess, what that's going to do, it's going to set spotted to true because now he's actually spotted the player. And there we go. Then the first task, which has the highest priority, is going to be based on spotted. So um, if spotted is true, um, what is he going to do? And I'll explain in a bit why we're using this system and not just the basic, um, can you see yes or no? And you know, that mostly has to do with, um, you know, that spawn point. Um, because if he can still still see the player, but he's one or two far off from his spawn point, um, we need him to go back at some point. Um, so yeah, anyway. So um, spotted is true, um, which has to be a selector as well. Sorry about that. Um, 
So composite. Perfect. So if spotted this true, what is going to happen? So let's do a, a task here and another selector here. So obviously this has to be the main priority and this is simply going to be based on the distance um, of the player compared to the uh, NPC. So, uh, and the spawn, sorry, the NPC and the spawn. So uh, distance below um, invoker compared to um, local object, so local variable invoker spawn. Now, how big this distance is, that is completely up to you. Also depends on your level design and etc. etc. But basically, we can do 20. Um, and that means that he's going to execute all of these things as long as he's not further away. Um, you know, he's closer than 20 meters of his actual spawn point. If he's further away from that, we're going to have him go back. Local variable um, invoker and spawn. And let's do a, a small um, point of this. Now we're going to turn off wait till arrives. Um, because, you know, if, if he goes back to his spawn and then he is again within that range um, and the player goes towards him, we want him to chase the player again. If we do wait until he arrives, basically he becomes completely harmless that entire um, route back, um, you know, making him kind of, uh, you know, kind of an easy target. Um, so, yeah, we need to make sure that he, he doesn't become uh, an easy target this way. Cool. Um, now we're also going to ha use focus here because obviously this is melee. So once he goes back, we want to make sure he, um, you know, he releases the target. Um, so that's a getting a bit a uh, bit of a head here, um, but we need to make sure we do that and we don't forget that. So we're going to do release target. We're going to do that first because uh, we want to make sure that he's not still looking and rotated towards the player while walking backwards to his spawn. That would just look weird. Um, so yeah, we need to make sure he does that. So yeah, these are the, the basics for the, the normal uh, behavior basically. And then here we're going to um, differentiate again. So I'm going to do another composite and another composite. And um, the requirement here is going to be based on that class as well. So we can have a condition here. And this is where we're basically going to differentiate between the two classes when it comes to their actual melee, um, well, in this case, melee behavior. Um, but yeah, as you might guess, you know, this is easy to expand with different types of um, enemies as, you know, all of the basics um, is what everyone kind of needs, um, you know, um, so yeah, there we go. Now, in this case, we're going to start off this video with just creating the no, uh, the no shield class. So um, for now, I'm just going to do a, a simple task here just to make sure it doesn't, uh, the behavior doesn't fail and throw us any errors. Um, it's also going to be focus, invoker, um, set target on the player. So really simple, and that's something we'll change in the next video. Um, but for now, we need to focus on uh, just this no shield one. Um, but as you might guess, you know, for the next video, it's going to be a lot quicker to set this up. So next up, um, we need to do a task again, and we need to do a random selector. And there we go. And the reason we do random selector is because we want these, um, you know, these melee tasks to basically be random and not always literally be the same, makes them a bit less predictable and makes them act more like actual AI 
um, as if they're really choosing to do certain things, while in reality it's just you know a random selection of a base of presets. Now, when it comes to the first uh, task, this is going to be um, you know the same. So set target on the player. No conditions here, and we need to turn this to a parallel. And basically what a parallel does is it makes sure that these two um, execute at the same time. So they're basically constantly you know, running at the same time. And the reason for that is because you know, we always just need to make sure that he stays targeted. Because um, sometimes if you, you know, um, if you don't keep him targeted this way, some actions might actually interrupt the targeting um, and he will lose focus and then he won't be rotated properly. And it's just easier to make sure it, um, it happens constantly. Cool. Um, and then when it comes to the random selector, we're basically going to have a, a couple of uh, tasks here. So we can start off with just having, um, you know, the basic... Um, basic tasks so I'm just going to do five for now you can expand this as much as you want um, you know make it as complicated as you will really um, and this distance um, requirement is going to be quite essential to everything now for this I, I do want to um, mention this right uh, right away um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the Infinity PBR Troll Packs, or Ogre, whatever he calls it, um, who is slightly bigger than the player, not that much actually, which is a good thing, because it's not supposed to look like a boss, but you know he's still supposed to look you know, menacing. Um, and because he's slightly bigger, his weapon is also slightly bigger, and that impacts the distance in which he will attack. And that's the reason I'm stating that, because that's quite important. Um, if you are using basic enemies who are literally the same size as the player, um, then you might want to reduce the distance between the um, NPC and the player a tiny bit um, for when he attacks. So um, in this case, you know, distance between the NPC and the player, I'm going to do uh, three. Um, if you use a regular sized NPC that is the same size as a normal player, then you should do like 2.5. For example, uh, but I'm going to use tree because you know he is slightly bigger. His weapon will be slightly bigger as well. Um, same condition here. So this is also going to be a uh, an attack. Um, this is also going to be an attack. And yeah, as you might have guessed, you know this is quite a quite an attacking um, quite an attacking behavior. But you know I think that is fun. Um, and, you know, to be honest, in Dark Souls, that's all they really do. You know, Dark Souls doesn't really have, uh, when it comes to the normal NPCs, their uh, behavior isn't smart in any way. Um, it just attacks a lot and it deals a lot of damage. Um, it's not particularly clever, um, you know, clever AI or anything like that. Um, so no, you know, crazy going into cover, rolling around, doing crazy stuff. It's, uh, when it comes to the basic enemies, they're... They're really basic in how they behave as well. Um, and then one really important one here, um, and that is incredibly important. Um, so that's not based on the distance. So if this distance requirement of being so close to player is not met, and um, he is not in a attack, and it's really important you add this. Um, so um, when it comes to um, melee is invoker not attacking then he's going to uh, move uh, to the player and this is why we need that variable so the global variable um, of player um, because um, we're not going to use follow for a good reason um, follow actually um, you know, uses the whole focus thing a bit as well. I'm not really sure how it interacts, um, but basically using follow creates a couple of complications. So that's why we're doing move. Um, we don't need to do anything here, no wait to arrives, no stop threshold, um, because it doesn't have to be precise because when he's back in that, um, you know, in that range of, um, you know, the three, um, three meters, he's going to do something else anyway. So yeah, 
Um, that's why it's um, you know quite important to have this condition because if he's not attacking, um, we want him to move to the player, and this is going to repeat, repeat. So he'll just you know go to the player, um, and then once um, he's within the three uh, meter range, this action will have been done. So it's going to randomly select something else. So yeah. Um, but yeah, not attacking is important because if you do not add this condition, then basically during attack, if you roll away as the player or dash away, whatever you want to call it, or just walk away, um, he's still going to move, um, you know, while uh, doing that attack, and it just looks super weird. Um, so yeah, basically that's a, that's a hard requirement that it's not during a attack, because otherwise he's just going to glide over the floor. Cool. Um, when it comes to these behaviors, again, these are supposed to be the basic enemies, so I'm not going to make them uh, uh, too complex. So, um, you know, he's going to do A here. Um, here he's going to do a double combo. Um, wait one second, that's for the animation to play. And he's going to do a double. Um, and here he's going to be do a B attack, um, which is a different attack. Um, and in this one, he's just going to wait for one second. Now, the reason we have him wait for one second is because we also sometimes need him to basically have a break. Um, you know, they're not non-stop just attacking, attacking, attacking. Sometimes there is a moment of pause. Um, if you think one second is not enough, if you think this should happen more often, you can just add an additional task, um, which repeats this. Uh, makes it slightly less challenging if you think that's you know interesting um, but yeah basically that's the reason why we add that wait one second and yeah when it comes to the uh, the behavior for now that that's literally it um, so you know this is everything basically um, so yeah nothing uh, nothing else here so let's make sure we save that um, then when we go to the NPC uh, in the class, uh, we need to make sure that um, you know we put no shield, and that's why there's also no blocking. So as you might have guessed, you know for the shield one, um, you know the behavior is going to be a bit more interesting because um, when it comes to the random toss, because you know there will also be blocking. Um, so yeah, will be a bit more interesting, but it won't differ as much, which is why basically we can have that all in one behavior graph. Cool. So um, that's it for the behavior. Um, when it comes to uh, perception, um, I'm going to limit perception quite a bit, so only 12 meters. Um, I think that I wouldn't be surprised if that's still more than what they use in Dark Souls, because sometimes I'm like, wow, I can get incredibly close without them actually seeing anything. Um, when it comes to their idol, um, for most enemies in Dark Souls, they, they literally don't do anything. Um, except for you know an idle animation, um, which is why you know if you do want to add that, um, you know you can do that. Um, where was that? Uh, here. So you can add an idle animation. It randomly selects. So you know instead of doing a task, you can do a random selector as well, and just have different tasks playing random idle animations. Um, if you think that's cool. Um, so yeah, but you know, that's what happens in Dark Souls as well. Um, they're not doing anything, they're not moving around or things like that, um, which is why you can just sneak attack up you know, from the back, for example, um, because yeah, they don't move. They just stay still pretty much. Cool. Um, so yeah, when it comes to um, you know, the NPC, obviously we need to um, set some uh, actions as well when it comes to death, etc. Um, but before we dive into that, I do want to set up the weapon first. Um, because obviously, you know, that's, uh, that's going to be quite important as well. Because the weapon of um, the NPC is basically going to uh, dictate the type of NPC it is. So yeah, let's set that up. So for the weapon setup of the NPC, we're going to create a new folder here in our combat. And we're going to do, um, I'll just call it no shield. So let's start off with NPC. So we can group that together. Um, NPC no shield. There we go. Now to make matters a lot easier, because we don't need to complicate things that much, um, we can actually just duplicate this sword. So sword 01. 
um, and just drag that to uh, NPC no shield. Um, I'll just call it no shield. Um, as there's no uh, actual actions attached to it, duplicating this won't cause an, uh, won't cause an issue. Um, we can use the same prefabs uh, mostly. Obviously, we just need to replace this one. Um, so we'll duplicate this again, drag it in. Um, we don't need to uh, we don't need to have a shield here. I mean, we can't have a shield here to make it even more interesting. Um, so yeah, we can remove that. I'm even keeping the same locomotion uh, as I'm fine with that. It will look slightly different on him as well. If you want different animations, just put different animations. Trying to reduce the amount of animation packs I'm using for this video a bit, as otherwise, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a bit much. So I'll rename this to uh, No Shield uh, Prefab. There we go. Can't have them have the same name. We'll drag that in here. Um, and in here, we'll need a new prefab, of course. Um, when it comes to their combos, um, going to remove the the kick um, with input forward. Uh, don't want him to uh, to have the kick. I'm going to have a uh, a a. There's no triple a in the behavior we set up, um, and there's only a b attack. So we do need to create those. Um, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same animation pack. However, I'm going to do the, you know, only the two-handed attacks basically. So there's a couple of two-handed attacks in sword pack uh, in uh, this animation pack sword shields and I'm set. So there's a couple where he uses two hands. So at least it will look slightly different in terms of the attacks. So we can use the same pack. So let's just um, duplicate one of them. There we go, drag it in there again. Um, and just uh, no shield uh, A, there we go. Um, going to go here and while well, we need to find them, um, I can't remember which ones I used. So this um, is going to be my B attack. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's going to be uh, a heavy attack, which matches well with a uh, you know a slower character so that's uh, that's a pretty good one um, so that's combo CL heavy we'll uh, use that and then um, let's have a look at what would work well for him um, no That's slow, so in a way that will work. There we go, so that's one of them. Um, so SPU and, no, not U2. Those are counters, there must be another one. That's way too fast. Well, let's set, the, set up the first one first. So I'll do, um, let's lock this just to make sure I'm not um, losing it. Then go to um, animations and we'll use um, SBU first. There we go, extract um, is an attack, is blockable. All of that is completely fine. Now on the player we do want some defense damage of course, um, so there needs to be some damage done on the player to his defense and poise. And let's drag in that NPC for the preview. Okay, so that definitely needs to move a bit. We can extend that a tiny bit, and there we go. Cool. So that's the first one. Um, so we're good there. Then um, let's uh, right hand as well. So duplicate it again. Um, so we'll call this AA. Still need to look that up. Um, and duplicate it again for the B attack. Um, 
so let's rename this to B. There we go. I'm going to lock that one as well. And we'll pick um, that very first one, so combo heavy, um, which is going to be a slightly expanded attack. Now, one of the downsides of having combos is that you basically, um, you know, you can't set multiple active states. So we need to make it active basically at the start um, and keep it active until the end. And there we go. So that's a, yeah, that's quite a long. Uh, Long, long time. Now the nice thing here is that he's moving backwards so it wouldn't actually damage the player anyway. Yeah, it's a quite a long active period. Um, yeah, I'm still going to make that um, interruptible and vulnerable as you know that for normal enemies that does fit. There's no reason it wouldn't be. And for bosses we can obviously do something different with that. Cool. Um, now we only need um, a, a second one for the AA. So um, let's actually quickly find that. So I'll just fast forward until I uh, I find it. And there we go, so it's RD. Uh, yeah, the naming is all a bit um, odd with these. So um, RD is going to be the second one. So we can lock this, we go back here, and we'll drag in um, RD. There we go. So that's the second two-handed one. And yeah, that needs to be active here. And stop being active here. Cool. Perfect. Um, so yeah, these do some damage. Now, when it comes to um, when it comes to the second one, um, so basically the the B attack um, of the NPC. Um, so instead of doing a subtract, um, you know, stamina for the uh, the enemy, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to have them have stamina as well. So we will need to change some of these things. So let's get started with that. So um, the first one is doing one and two. So for now, we'll, uh, we'll keep that. Um, and then when it comes to um, on hit, um, when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the damage, um, we'll need to uh, basically decide something there. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll think of something. Um, same here as well, so let's make sure we remove those stamina actions. There we go. And then we need to drag all of these in as well. Now I'm keeping the same uh, hit reactions. Again, um, you know, if you want to uh, get creative, I, I would recommend it if you do have the animations, um, you know, to have different ones, obviously for enemies that, that is a lot cooler. Um, but yeah, you don't uh, you don't have to do that. Um, but that's up to you. Cool. So um, yeah, we have all of um, all of these set up now. So that's pretty awesome. Then uh, what we need to do next is uh, make sure we reference to that in our behavior. Um, so we need to make sure that the uses the no shield weapon, um, so that he can actually draw something. And the first step is making sure he also has a character model. So for the character models, um, you know, there's tons we can use for M uh, Infinity PBR. Um, I'm going to use the troll. Now, one of the one of the important things here is that you, uh, you know, I think it's uh, this is the default troll. This is the one I added it. There we go. So um, the default troll, as you you know can see, he has uh, loads of different things here <laughs> going on. Um, so he already has some uh, some weapons. So what we'll do um, is we'll unpack this prefab unpack. Um, so he has uh, you know he has the sword, um, and he has um, 
well, loads of uh, clothing. Um, you can customize all of that with the blend shapes. I I'm pretty fine with it. Uh, I'm going to leave all of that as is. But when it comes to the sword, it's actually important that it's, uh, it's gone. Now, what I'll do here is, uh, in order to make sure I have it, because I didn't see it um, separate, and I might be wrong, but I just didn't see it separately. So if it is uh, separately available, you know, ignore these steps, but I, I just couldn't find it. Um, but I do want that sword, I just don't want it to, um, you know, to be uh, the skinned mesh renderer, basically. Um, so one of the ways you can do this um, is basically uh, by doing the following. So um, mesh filter, uh, mesh renderer. Um, basically, we look up that mesh, um, we drag it in, um, we look up the material, we drag it in, and then we remove the skin mesh renderer. Then we have the sword, we can drag it out of the, the hierarchy um, and basically um, create it into the prefab. So I already have it here, but I'll just do it again. This time I'll just call it sword ogre instead of troll. And there we go. So it's an actual, um, you know, mesh this time. It doesn't need a, a mesh collider anyway, as it's a melee weapon, so that's perfect. Uh, but yeah, this way we can have it completely separate, um, and we can then remove that. Now, one of the nice things um, that is done here, so when we go to um, to the cloning, to his um, root, um, let's look, so right shoulder, right arm, right forearm, hand, um, you know, we have the right weapon, which basically is the location where the weapon would be. So we can copy this component. Um, then when we go back to our NPC no shield, in the no shields prefab, um, we're going to basically um, paste these component values. Then obviously it is important that um, the sword also um, you know, it's basically set to zero on all of those to make sure it actually fits. So let's open up the prefab. And let's find that uh, prefab we just created for this uh, sword ogre. We drag that in. We can remove this one. And this all has to be set to zero. <coughs> And then, yeah, one of the things is, you know, <clears throat> it doesn't perfectly fit, um, which is, you know, kind of a shame. So um, I'm just going to drag it in like this. And technically, this should work. Um, might be wrong, might be completely misremembering how I originally did this, but, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. And if not, we can just adjust it. But yeah. So as you can see, the sword is bigger, and that's what I meant with the distance. Um, with the distance for the between the player and um, the NPC when it comes to the behavior. Uh, so let's move that around a bit. Yeah, that's good enough. Cool. I can drop this one just slightly lower. And yeah, there we go. Cool, it's all in. So let's, uh, let's hope that actually works the way I intended to work. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what I originally did, but if not, uh, we'll need to uh, readjust it anyway. Um, then going back to the actual troll itself, um, what we need to do is we, need to, we do need to make sure that everything else is gone that is um, also there, because often in the Infinity Viewer prefabs, there's magic effects and everything, but it doesn't seem like it is in this one, so that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, when it comes to his look, you know, go ahead, customize it as much as you want. Um, you know, I'll leave that up to you. Um, one of the things that is obviously going to be quite important here is when it comes to his... Um, when it comes to his actual skeleton, um, we do need to make sure it's set to, um, set to humanoid um, in case it's not. So we can have a look here. Um, and I think I set it to humanoid, and if I'm wrong, um, you know, I'm wrong. I, I might have been actually generic by, by default. Just set it to humanoid. It's, you can actually use this, and everything for me was just mapped correctly. Um, 
I might be mistaken with another model, but I'm pretty sure it was this one. Um, but if it's set to generic, just set it to humanoid and um, hit apply, you know, avatar create from this model. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, then we have this new one, so I'll just call it new ogre. So, you know, we're using the correct prefabs here. Prefab, we'll drag it in. Let's uh, remove it. And that's the one we're going to set as the character model. So let's drag that in. Um, and yeah, that should be pretty much it for the basics. Obviously, we're still missing loads of conditions and things like that. Um, but let's hit play and see where it gets us. It's not getting us anywhere um, because it's not working. Uh, so let's have a look as to why it's not working. Um, so there we go. Um, that's because it's already seen the player from the start, um, which makes sense. So we'll drag it out just a bit. And let's try that again. Ah, we, uh, I forgot to add the stats um, stats module to this character. Apologies for that. Um, so yeah, we need stats as well. I am going to drag this up a bit um, just to make sure it's, uh, you know, happens before the, all of the triggers. And let's try that again. There we go. Um, so the positioning of the weapon is not correct. Um, so I did definitely fail with that. I was hoping that would work. Um, when it comes to his attacks, as you can see, that's all um, you know, all working. So let's uh, let's focus uh, let's focus on him. All of that is working as well. But there's one thing I want to change. So basically, as you can see, it's um, when it comes to dodging and he's attacking, um, it will be a bit more difficult to properly. Um, you know, dodge because he keeps focusing on us and we need to adjust that as well. So in order to make the changes correctly, what we need to do is um, on the troll, um, we go to, um, on his weapon, we go to every clip and we make sure that on execute, um, we do focus, um, invoker, release target and Another one of the reasons why it's so important that it keeps refocusing in the behavior graph is because after that, well, it needs to refocus. So now when I am um, going to play, um, we can keep everything else the same for now. We'll, uh, we'll adjust the weapon uh, placement in a bit. There we go. Yeah, uh, it's really hard. <laughs> to see if this is working exactly the way it should with his weapon being in such a weird place. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's fix that, fix that first because that's really, really, really bugging me. There we go. So let's go to the weapon. Uh, make sure you select the parent um, when you uh, retarget um, this correctly. Yeah, this seems about right. Maybe the angle is a bit, a bit off. There we go. Let's see what this actually looks like in motion. Um, yeah, it's hitting him a bit. Um, obviously, the animations are not made for a big sword like that, so we might need to change that rotation just a tiny bit. Again, the animations were not made for a, uh, a big ass sword like this. Um, but yeah, let's try that again. Let's see in scene. 
Oh, it's doesn't seem to clip, um, which is good. It comes awfully close, but I'm fine with that. Um, so let's copy then uh, copy components. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to his prefab and um, I'll open it up just in, just in case. And we'll um, paste those values in. There we go. Cool. Now let's give this another try and let's see how it fares in uh, in actual combat. So when we try this out, we'll encounter that there's um, you know one small issue um, when it comes to the dodging is that basically he's able to track us really well, and there's only really one small opening and. You know, as you can see, I can hardly ever get it right. Um, but he just basically keeps tracking, making, you know, dodging quite, um, well, quite useless in that sense. And it's supposed to be, you know, quite an important mechanic, so we can't have it be useless. And one of the ways to avoid this issue is by basically having these conditions in there. Um, and yeah, it actually helps having it in here as well. And when we hit play, this time around, um, you know, and we focus on him. So let's make sure we actually focus on him. Um, we actually have the opportunity to dodge. Now, this does mean that, you know, it becomes slightly easier and it's never really supposed to be about, um, you know, supposed to be about just one on one with basic enemies being that difficult. It's about their damage output and, you know, damage in numbers. So that's uh that's our way to fix this now we need a couple of other things so basically what we need on our um, npc is also a canvas we need to see his um his health and there's a couple of ways to uh to approach this um i'd like it to be you know a bit dynamic let's just say that um so we're going to add a canvas here let's make sure we select world space um, positioning all zero and well, let's try something like this it might be a bit too small actually yeah it's a, it's a bit on the smaller side but that's okay um, we can make it just a bit bigger perfect this gives us a, a bit of space to basically you know uh, have our health bar in there uh, obviously it's not going to be this big so let's have our um, UI image so this is going to be the background of the UI image um, so let's reshape that and this is about a good size um, maybe a bit too big still okay let's just make it 7 high and 60 yeah it's maybe still a bit big i'm going to do it like this and you can resize it to you know obviously whatever size you want that's completely up to you so this is going to be our background um so i'm going to have this being black um, and semi-transparent let's just keep it at 200. Um, let's rename this to health uh, bar there we go then um, our health bar needs a uh, attribute UI um, game object let's try in our NPC um, health so let's uh, give him some so I'm just going to I should have done that um, before actually let me there we go drag those in under so this is going to be um, health delay um, which actually does need um, its own attribute UI as well so we can just keep that drag in the image in the value fill image and for the health bar uh, itself um, we don't need this now both of these um, there we go both of these do need to have an image and I'm just going to use a square one um, and there's a couple in the stats examples is one of them for example um, I'm going to make them a uh, reddish color yeah good with that 
That looks good. Um, it needs to be filled and horizontal. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. And then here we need to drag in that health bar. Now, if you wanted to display health numbers as well, that's completely possible. Um, I'll I'll do that as well, and you know it's up to you. You can choose to actually, um, you know, not do that. Just remove it. That's uh, that's fine. So text zero point one. I'm doing the zero point one just to make the text a bit sharper. Um, so we'll be uh, will be sharper. There we go. As you can see, it's also rotated the wrong way, uh, and we do need to fix that. Um, so 180, there we go. And this text needs to be centered like that. Let's turn off Gizmos for two seconds, just so we have a, a clear impression. Let's resize that properly. There we go. And again, the health bar, it, uh, the text is completely optional. Um, that's up to you. Um, I do think it often helps, makes it a bit more, uh, a bit easier in a way. I'm going to turn these on just to avoid any complications when it comes to um, resolution scaling. And then on here, we're going to do a trigger, actions, look at, and then it's going to be the invoker, um, and it's going to look at the camera. And we need to keep these freeze rotations turned on as well. That's really important because, um, base, you know, that way we can be sure that it only rotates on the y-axis, um, and because uh, otherwise it would look, you know, rotate a really strange way. Um, the reason I'm choosing camera is because this way it doesn't matter which way the player is rotated, as long as we are looking at the NPC. Um, we can actually see exactly, um, you know, what their health bar is and what it should look like. So it should always face us. Now, obviously, we do need to reference that text as well, and we can do that here. And again, this is optional. You don't have to have text if you prefer without, um, you know, think it looks cleaner. Um, you know, you're right. It does look cleaner without. Cool. Um, Let's make sure this restarts as well, obviously, because otherwise it's only going to do it once. And um, yeah, we're pretty much done with um, our canvas here. Now, obviously, we do need a couple of uh, triggers, actions on the NPC in general, because you know a lot is happening um, in that sense. So um, we have our on start trigger, um, which basically um, you know calls these uh, conditions. Um, that seem to be undefined, so um, let's actually fix that. I'm not sure what happened here. I think it was under objects, yeah, render visible. There we go. I'm not sure what happens. Uh, what happened there? So if the NPC is not visible, then you know we're not going to have these. Uh, um, this being lockable. Cool. Now let's focus on our canvas. Um, when it comes to the canvas, I want a couple of things to happen as well. Um, so we're going to um, add an additional trigger here on our NPC. So trigger. Um, variable change, um, that variable change is going to be um, target, um, target focused, I think, yeah. Um, and then we'll call this conditions canvas, um, you know, just to make sure we, uh, we differentiate a bit. Let's give this a proper name as well. So actions called condition and conditions uh, targetable. Pretty sure there is a spelling error there, but that's okay. So I'm going to drag these down a bit so we all have them together. So the conditions of this canvas um, basically is going to decide when we actually see this canvas because I don't want to, um, you know, always see this. So 
um, if uh, game object um, target uh, focused is the same as our MBC. So if our MBC is the target focus, um, then we're going to make the canvas appear. And we'll do that with a canvas group just to make it look a bit smoother. Um, and then Yeah, let's do that first. So canvas, canvas group. And if you're not aware what a canvas group does, um, it basically, um, you know, dictates the transparency. So by default, it should be set to zero. So we're not going to activate or deactivate the canvas. We're just going to make it visible. And the advantage of doing that is that we can do it gradually. So it has a bit of a fade effect, um, which just looks nicer. Um, doesn't add on any other value except for just looking nicer, <laughs> um, but that's good enough. Um, we want it to happen fast though, so in 0 0.5 um, it's going to go to 1, so in 0 0.5 seconds it will be completely visible. It's just a small transition, um, but it does look, uh, does look smooth. Um, then we're going to do something else here, so we have a, another condition. So um, focus, so if the player um, is not focused himself, um, that is quite important, um, then we're going to do the opposite. So just like in the Dark Souls game, if we do not focus on him uh, on the enemy ourself, um, then it won't be visible. And just to be sure, um, I'm going to do target here. Um, yeah, let's do target. That way, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, it will only turn on if the uh, if the NPC is the actual focus, um, which is good. And um, if the player isn't focused at all, it will just uh, turn off. And yeah, that's a that's a fine trick. Now we do want it to turn on as well the moment we actually, um, you know, hit the NPC, just like in Dark Souls. So if we are hitting the NPC. Um, it needs to turn on as well, so we do need some uh, a trigger for that to recognize, and we needed this trigger anyway um, in terms of damage. Um, so receive attack, um, and in this case, we're doing receive damage. So we need to make sure that it's only happening when if we're actually damaging them, because um, otherwise, what's the point in you know activating that um, activating the health bar? And it will be just for a short while, um, just to quickly um, display that we're damaging him, and that's going to be pretty much it. So let's create that. So conditions, um, and let's do a canvas uh, on hit. There we go. Now, the important thing here is that this will only happen if we're not focused. Because um, if we are focused, it's going to be turned on anyway. So that's why we do need that condition. So that's only if we're not in focus, we hit the NPC and we want to see that health bar. So we can take the same action here. So just off the canvas group, duplicate it. And like I said, this will be a really short time. You can make that longer if you want. That's up to you. Um, but otherwise, you know, the, the screen will be full with health bars if we're just going to hit every single NPC. So this way, you know, we quickly see if we're applying damage, which is important. Um, but we don't need to see too many health bars at the same time because it will just make the UI look, uh, look a bit dirty, to be honest. It's cool. So um, that's it for the, the basic conditions. Now, um, if you remember properly, um, in the behavior, we didn't actually set any actions other than the wait action if um, we the NPC has no more health. So we do need to decide what actually happens um, to the NPC um, if his health is gone as well. So we're going to do that here with exactly the same one. Um, so um, we're going to do conditions health. So if we apply some uh, damage, what is going to happen? And separately, we need to have that trigger um, that actually dictates what happens um, when the NPC actually dies as well. So we're going to do attribute change, uh, invoker in this case, health, and then we'll need some conditions for that as well. 
So we're going to have conditions health and we're going to have conditions death. Now the health conditions are going to be um, pretty pretty simple straightforward so um, attributes um, and let's make sure to avoid any uh, any issues let's just drag in that NPC itself um, that also works in case of prefab so that's fine so if the value of is um, uh, is greater or equal than uh, one then we're going to apply some damage and um, we can copy the same one for death uh, if the value is less or equal to zero then he's going to die i'm going to do this one um this one first so we're going to do a um a small weight of 0 0.5 and in this case uh, and again this is optional you can choose whatever you want um, but I want to make sure, um, let's make sure that canvas is disactivated first, by the way, so we, you know, avoid any confusion. Um, I also want to make sure that, um, you know, the, the NPC isn't able to do anything anymore. And there's several ways we can do this. So we can either do a ragdoll, which is quite the traditional thing to do, or we can do a death animation. Now, when it comes to a death animation, obviously you need to make sure he stays in that animation. And as these are heavy enemies, for me, it doesn't really make sense to have them, you know, ragdoll all over the place. Um, so I'm going to go with a um, ragdoll, uh, with a death animation. So character state, um, we're going to drag in the NPC again. And in here, we can do a state asset, but we can also just do an animation clip just to make things easier. And he's basically going to stay in that uh, in that animation obviously when it comes to death animations you can pick whatever you want it, it really doesn't um, matter all that much um, let's have a look at what looks nice okay that's not death <laughs> um, Yeah, that seems a bit long, it's at least a tiny bit shorter. So we'll go with tiny bit shorter. It's, uh, it doesn't make a lot, big difference and they're still pretty long, but that's okay. Now when it comes to these, um, to these animations, we need to make sure uh, you know a couple of things are set. Um, so let's have a look here. Um, so death, um, we picked L, right? That's the shorter one, yeah, okay. Um, we need to make sure loop is off because um, if loop is on it's just going to create a big issue and these are root motion animations and that's fine in this case um, because we can use root motion in this sense because there doesn't have to be any actual movement in this case um, however what we do need to make sure of is that at the same time um, we're also going to um, enable components um, the character controller needs to be turned off. That way, um, you know, we no longer have any collisions with the NPC either. And that is quite important. Um, we need to, you know, because otherwise there's going to be some invisible, um, you know, collider in our scene, which obviously you don't want. In that case, that would be at the point of origin of where the animation would start. And we just want it to be, you know, done with uh, no collisions. You know, this is the end. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So a couple of a uh, couple of small steps. Now, when it comes to health, um, obviously we need, you know, something to happen as well when it comes to health, and that is going to be our uh, damage. And that's going to be pretty simple. Um, so we can just do um, change attribute. Um, game objects drag in that npc again health um, subtract and then the value is going to come from our global variable um, player damage um, strength yeah strength in our case um, and that's going to be the damage output the player does and yeah that's that's literally it cool 
Now, in order to see how much um, health this MPC actually has to have, uh, we're going to do a small play test um, because when we created all of these numbers, you know, didn't really keep something in mind when it comes to uh, when it comes to the actual damage outputs. So, you know, how much health they should have. So let's have a look. So um, once we focus on him, um, you know, the health bar is visible. As you can see, it's a bit too low and he has a crazy amount of uh, health as well. Um, yeah, I forgot that this, <laughs> obviously the character model is uh, a bit bigger, so. Um, but actually this amount of health, yeah, it's actually not that bad. We're doing quite some damage as well. And yeah, that's actually decent output. I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty okay. Um, and then we have that happen. <laughs> so um, let's actually have a look here why that was so, so fast. I'm, I'm personally fine with um, the amount of health they have by default. If you think it's a bit too much for a basic, uh, basic NPC, you can reduce that. But you know, we're not going for big numbers here. This is a Souls game. It's not a big number of NPCs. Um, you know, it's lower volumes. So yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'm completely fine with that. We just need to make sure that this canvas is a bit higher um, than um, I originally put it. So when it comes to our canvas group, let's set this to um, one for a moment here. Um, and let's drag that up. Should be high enough. Yeah, that should be high enough. So we'll do one more, um, one more quick play test. I do want to see what is actually happening here. Um, oh, it's still too long. Okay, that's fine. I'll just drag it up once more, and we're done. Now, when it comes to um, you know him being hit and not being able to uh, basically do anything we're going to come up with something for in our behavior for that as well to, just to make it slightly more interesting um, I'm aware it's not really in the vein of the typical souls game because you know normal NPCs are I mean they're high damage output cannon fodder that's pretty much what they are they don't really do much else um, but yeah okay so our uh, canvas needs to be a tiny bit higher. Uh, there we go. That's enough. And when it comes to the death animation, um, we just need to reduce the transition time to 0 0.1. It's it's just a bit too much. Um, and wait, let's put that to uh, yeah, one is fine. Cool. So one last play test, um, just to make sure it's all uh, fine, especially when it comes to the health bar height. And there we go. So as you can see, um, no health bar. I'm going to uh, kick him, and we briefly saw his, uh, um, you know, his health bar, but obviously not for that long. Now I'm focusing on it, and so let's try to counter him once as well. No, there wasn't a counter. It's actually not executing, so let's quickly have a look there. Okay, let's uh, turn that to the following. Okay, okay, okay. That was not a perfect block timing. And there we go, that's a lot better. Cool. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty good there. So we have our perfect blocks happening as well, uh, which is pretty nice. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm fine with that damage. Um, on the perfect block, let's add some, uh, some additional damage as well. And lastly, let's fix him hovering like crazy. Perfect. So we'll, uh, we'll fix the hovering. Um, in a bit. 
So let's have uh, the same output conditions. Um, health, we copy that over. I'm gonna go to um, the counter. Sword one counter. Um, it is already subtracting additional damage. Um, maybe we should duplicate that uh, just to do a bit more. That's fine. And um, let's make sure he also, um, you know, the NPC doesn't float. I think that's uh, that's slightly better as well. So character animator. Let's uh, let's make him go down a tiny bit. Something like this should be fine enough. Um, then lastly, um, the only thing uh, you know we did notice is that um, the 0 0.5 wasn't enough and we'll do an additional second and then we're done. Perfect. So that's it for this video. In the second one we're going to make their um, behavior slightly more interesting um, by adding a couple of small changes and um, what we'll do additionally is um, create variations. Now our behavior is already set up for variation, so it won't actually take a lot of time, um, which obviously is a great thing. Um, but we just want to make sure that, you know, we have at least a couple of variants of this basic behavior um, just to have a, a bit more fun. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.